Hi, it's Tom here from Running Physio. Today, I'd like to try and answer a question I get asked about a lot in clinic, which is, is PRP effective for Achilles tendinopathy? Now, a lot of patients will find because tendon pain is often slow to recover, it's quite labor intensive from their point of view, they've got lots of rehab to do, and it can have a big impact on their life, that actually they'll find if things aren't changing, they might want to look for other solutions. And then maybe they have a look online and they find things like PRP being advertised um, with all sorts of benefits being suggested. And they naturally think, well, might that work for me? Um, now, I actually see a lot of patients in clinic who have, have tried and unfortunately not had success with multiple different treatments. So they'll often be considering PRP. And I see quite a few people who've had PRP already. So in this video, I wanna talk a little bit about what it is um, and draw on some new research that's just come out uh, as to whether PRP actually is a good option for people with Achilles tendinopathy. Uh, also, some exciting news for you. Um, we've had loads of emails about running repairs online, asking if we can open it up for you. So we've just opened up enrollment. So do check that out. I've put a link there if you want to find out more about our online course and how it can help you with runners in clinic. So let's talk a little bit about PRP and what it is. It's platelet-rich plasma. Um, my understanding is what they do is they take a sample of someone's blood and they put it in a centrifuge uh, to extract uh, the plasma fraction, which is then injected into the tendon. Uh, and it's thought that that contains lots of growth factors, lots of things that can help the tendon to heal and recover. So it sounds good in theory um, and, uh, you know, sounds quite good to the patients, I would imagine. But does it actually work? Well, in my experience of seeing a lot of patients who've tried this and sometimes spent a lot of money and had multiple injections, I must admit I'm not convinced that it's particularly effective. And as I said, it is quite a costly procedure to have done, especially if you're gonna have two or three or multiple injections around the tendon. But that's just my opinion, my experience. Let's have a little bit of a look into some of the research. Now, we've just had a new study on this by Kearneatool a randomized control trial and what they did is they actually compared a single PRP injection with a sham injection uh, which was in the insertion of a of sort of a dry needling technique uh, in 240 people with chronic Achilles tendinopathy so this is quite a large um, group when you compare it to some of the previous studies now their main outcome measure here was the visa a which is um, a questionnaire used to assess Achilles pain and function and the main time point they were using was the six months time point now they actually found there was no difference between the groups in their visa a scores at the three or six month time point um, and also also no difference in quality of life scores or pain at the two week, three month or six month time point in this Kearney at all study. So quite a large study, a nice randomized control trial that actually seemed to show that there isn't a difference in outcome, whether you're injecting actual PRP or just doing a sham injection where nothing's actually injected into the tendon at all. So this is pretty um, pretty damning I would say for PRP if it can't outperform a placebo injection. Now also of note uh, some people got some uh, some pain around that injection site and although it was mild in some cases that was still lingering at the six month time point. So we've got to think with these things is it effective? Um, does it come with risks? Are there costs involved? There's certainly financial costs involved. There are going to be risks with any invasive procedure, and such as putting in an, a needle in or around a tendon. And there might be some negative consequences, such as tendon site pain. So it would appear from this recent research um, that PRP isn't especially effective for Achilles tendinopathy. And that matches up with several meta-analyses that have been done recently uh, that have found quite similar results, such as Sangatul. Uh, they concluded that PLP injection with eccentric training did not improve visa ray scores, reduce tendon thickness, or reduce color Doppler activity in patients with chronic Achilles tendinopathy compared to saline injection. 
Now I included this for you because here they've actually done, uh, they compared it, uh, including some eccentric training, which I think is important because there's an argument that says, well, PRP on its own isn't going to do much. You need some loading to stimulate that change in the tendon, but it doesn't seem to have much of an additive effect being, bringing PRP in. Um, so my view really is we want to think about other options. Now, why might it not work? Um, well, first up, I think, well, perhaps the theory of PRP is flawed and it's a little bit, um, you know, optimistic to think that you can just take some of the blood content out, inject it around a tendon and expect it to miraculously help that, that tendon heal. Now, you might get this in lab studies or animal studies, but that's not really been demonstrated in humans as far as I know as yet. So it might be the theory is not particularly good. It's also very tendon focused and we're not treating tendons. I know you say this very regularly, but we're treating people with tendon pain. Just addressing the tendon part of it isn't really um, going to change things a great deal for them, I don't think. Now, also, the thought is that it might help with the pathology. Well, we know, too, that the link between pathology, pain, function and quality of life in people with Achilles tendinopathy isn't very strong. And we see from some of the nice um, subgroup work that we've talked about in our recent videos from Hanlon's tool that actually one of the groups that had some of the biggest impacts on uh, quality of life were not those with the largest structural change within the tendon. There were actually those with a highest level of fear of movement and the highest level of pain catastrophizing, neither of which are going to be addressed by any type of injection, including PRP. So I think it's, it's too tendon focused. Um, it's probably too pathology focused and that isn't really, we think, quite as important. It's a piece of the puzzle, but not the whole of the picture. But also, it's not addressing any of the impairments for the patient. It's not going to improve the physical impairments, such as loss of calf strength um, and functional movements that we might want people to do. It's not going to provide them a graded return to their valued activities. And it's not going to address any of the psychological factors such as fear of movement or pain catastrophizing, which we are now starting to see are a quite important component, certainly for some subgroups in Achilles tendinopathy. So my view on it then is I wouldn't personally recommend PRP injections. I think what we need to do if patients aren't responding well to our loading programs, which we know are, are often our kind of first port of call, is think about what we might be missing. Uh, delve into those beliefs around fear of movement, around pain catastrophizing, and make sure that there's a graded return to goal activities too. Try and identify the barriers to improvement because I'm just not convinced in that patient that isn't improving that an injection of PRP into the tendon is going to be the thing that makes the difference. And it seems from the research that that's the case as well, that PRP seems to promise a lot, but so far from the research that I'm aware of, it doesn't seem to deliver. Okay, thank you very much uh, for listening today. Uh, as I said, we have just opened up enrollment for running repairs online. I've put a link there for you. Do check that out. Have a look. We've got loads of, of great content there, lots of modules on everything from gait analysis through to tendinopathy, bone stress injury, strength and conditioning, etc. Check it out and see what you think. And then if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll look forward to reading those later. Okay, thanks again for listening. Bye for now.